Okay, thanks everyone for joining uh, and welcome to our webinar today talking about low code high impact apps with Microsoft Power Platform. Very excited to be here. Um, I've had a really great response and really thank you to everyone for joining. Um, in particular, thanks to our current customers. We've got a huge cohort of lots of different customers on the call today, which is fantastic. And thanks also to our very many and varied colleagues from Microsoft who have joined today. Uh, really appreciate the ongoing support that Microsoft provided us both in the Power Platform space, but also more broadly across uh, various different uh, topics and technologies in Australia and New Zealand and the broader region. We've got an absolutely packed schedule today. Uh, we've got our, our Power Platform uh, practice lead, Rob Carrington, uh, who is an absolute star in the Power Platform space. Um, and very excited to be able to show you a really wide range of different examples of uh, technologies and implementations and solutions that we've been able to implement with Power Platform from a really wide, broad range of different types of solutions and, and levels of complexity. Uh, one point of housekeeping, uh, during today's chat, um, please feel free to ask questions. Uh, so uh, in the chat feature, um, we'll be endeavouring to try to answer as many of your questions throughout the presentation. And so if you ask us questions, we'll be able to try to weave that into the presentation today. We'll also have some time at the end, which we'll schedule to provide you with a bit of insight into a bit of, bit of time for Q&A um, and get to questions that we might not have answered during the session. I'm hoping that uh, before we get into the details of the session, um, just a little bit of quick background into Engage Squared. So we're a digital agency, um, we specialise in digital productivity in particular, Microsoft 365, um, and we operate all across Australia. Um, we are also really excited uh, in this particular space, and Power Platform has been a, a business applications more broadly, a space that we've really been driving a lot of um, uh, new initiatives and some great value for our customers over the course of the last couple of years. We're lucky enough to be a Microsoft preferred partner for business applications in the Microsoft Charter program. So we get great insights into what Microsoft is doing in this space and uh, also um, our um, uh, you know, ability to engage with them, look at the new features that are coming through before they're available to the market and really take advantage of the, that new technology and look for applications for new features that are coming through. We're also really well versed in a range of different business scenarios and work across a heap of different verticals and lots of examples that we'll show you today are a really broad set of different customers. Uh, we don't just operate in the business application space, but it's one of our sort of four core verticals. We also do a heap of work with digital workplaces, uh, looking at intranets and, and delivering uh, amazing solutions in the intranet space. Um, looking at mobile, frontline worker enablement, using enterprise social to empower workers. We do a lot of work with information management, document management, records management and compliance, including helping organisations move to the cloud and empower that, um, that, that new way of working using modern technologies such as Teams and SharePoint Online. And we have a fantastic change in adoption practice that has been doing this for a really long time, almost 10 years of doing change in adoption focused around Office 365 and Microsoft technologies. And we're really skilled at being able to help organisations to transform that way that they work using new technology. So not just rolling out new technology and hoping that people will learn how to work more effectively, but actually being able to understand what the new capabilities are, understand how they might apply that to the work that they're doing and uh, change and become more effective with the technology as the backbone for that. And business applications is a really fantastic mechanism to achieve some of those productivity gains. So I don't want to talk too much. I want to hand over to Rob now, uh, who's going to take us through uh, some of the examples of how we can achieve power platform uh, impact uh, and really make a big difference within organisations. So Rob, over to you. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate the welcome um, and the introduction. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I know everyone's quite busy. Um, so today, what I would like to focus on are three main points. And I think I've lied a little bit. There's actually a fourth point in there. Uh, the fourth one I'm going to add first is I hope by the end of this webinar and this session that 
Um, you feel similar, at least a little bit more about the Power Platform than I do. So this is something I personally have found a great amount of excitement in for me to be able to build on it. And you'll, you'll see that excitement come through in these use cases and these projects we've been working on. Um, but the main things I want to talk about today on the Power Platform and about low code platforms is business value. Uh, there can be great technology platforms available and a lot of tools that businesses will use um, across, their, across their portfolio of, of applications. And understanding where low-code platforms fit in, uh, why it's useful and why the Microsoft platform and how the Microsoft platform provides business value is important to get that sort of buy-in. And even understanding, well, what is what does low-code mean? I hear these definitions, but what does it mean to me as a business? What's a way that I can think of it that makes sense to me? And where does it fit into my digital strategy? The second part is going to be the meat of the, uh, of the chat today, which is around the use cases for uh, the Power Platform and the projects that we have been delivering with clients. And the important part about this is, even though the, the Power Platform has been around for quite a few years now, uh, we find that a, a lot of our clients are still in the early stages of their journey into low-code applications and into the, uh, into the Power Platform, in Power Apps in particular. And this is to spark some ideas for yourselves to say, well, okay, that's great. I can see um, the statistical return on investment, but I want to actually see something. What are people already doing? Because that can help to understand where people are finding the value in the platform. So that's going to be the big meat of it. And um, I'll be very excited to show a range of different solutions we've created. It's only a um, handful of a selection today, um, but I think it's going to be a nice diverse range of different projects we've delivered. The third one is important to me as an individual, and I feel very important to businesses, is understanding Microsoft's investment in the Power Platform and what that means. And to, to give a bit of a, a background on that, what I mean by this is there are a lot of low-code platforms. There are a lot of applications that make up platforms from a lot of different, um, a, a lot of different vendors. And it can be hard to know is this actually going to be useful for me if I put in the time and effort? Is there support I need so I can upskill my staff or it's extensible and there's long-term capabilities and long-term strategies for this platform? Because you don't want to look at this as something that you test out for a, a couple weeks or maybe a month and say, well, that was a nice experiment, but it's not something I really want to be using for my business in the long term. This is to highlight throughout this chat around the investment that Microsoft's putting in both from a technological and monetary investment and also an investment in the community. And um, I will be absolutely emphasizing how amazing the Power Platform community is. Um, within the Microsoft world, I'm not too sure um, who might be here or talking about it uh, from different areas, but I, I feel that the Power Platform community is one of the most open and supportive communities out there um, within the Microsoft world. But before we even get started at looking at the Power Platform, I want to talk about, well, what is what is low code and how did we get here? Uh, so traditionally over the last, let's say, 20 years or so, um, organizations have been using a lot of different um, off-the-shelf applications to solve business problems and, and be able to automate their business processes or handle those processes. And what we've, what, what's been happening is these can be great applications, but businesses don't all work in the same way. There's there's no one size all uh, one size fits all approach, and what businesses start to do is they go down one of two routes. They either try and uh, conform themselves to the application and have all these gaps that they have within their um, uh, within their processes, or they go down a route of trying to create their own custom coded solution that has a long development cycle and takes quite a quite a bit of time, effort and money to be able to produce. And what businesses do is it's very expensive to go down that full custom development path. And it's also not working for them uh, with, with these gaps in the processes from these different applications that they have. 
So what happens is you find a lot of business processes or business applications that are created using two very familiar formats, uh, Word documents and Excel spreadsheets. These two are great for creating content. Word documents are fantastic and have been used for a while, and Excel is really good for analyzing data. But what's, what's happened is uh, we've been seeing that there has been a, a, a rise in all of these um, different business processes being entirely contained into Word and Excel. Other, other solutions might even be in a OneNote or something else, but we start to see some problems here. Uh, one of the biggest problems is it doesn't scale well for a lot of data. Sometimes, depending on if it's in a Word document, it's hard to then analyze the data that you have and act on it. The problem you then have is a lot of the business process automations you can have for approvals can be lengthy because you might need to send a document to someone else or someone needs to update a certain field in an Excel file and it's managed by individuals and there's a lot of inconsistencies. So it's it's not businesses as fault and I, I, I want to emphasize that it's it's not their, their fault that they've been doing this. The reason why businesses do this is because they're familiar with it and it works. So uh, because it works, people will go along to these areas. But that's where the low-code platform comes in. So what the low-code platform, what a low-code platform is meant to be is in the middle of these custom development solutions and Word document and Excel files, low-code solutions are meant to be graphical user interfaces to um, have drag and drop features for business users to be able to grasp those kinds of concepts more. So they're able to build these kinds of solutions out without needing extensive developer uh, development skills. That's, that's not to say you can't have developers in there. There's something in it for developers where they can extend on the platform if they want. But, but that's not what the point of today is. Today is to really look at the business users, what they can do and what, what we've been doing. And the kind of solutions we've been showing today, uh, while have been created by us, haven't, hasn't been created by developers. It's been created by people who are, um, who are not developers. And what, what does this mean when you're able to get the business users into the um, uh, into creating these solutions themselves. Well, you're getting the people who are the closest to the solution being able to build it out. So not only does it take less time to complete, in fact, it takes about uh, from a, a Forrester study about 70% less time to complete these um, projects if they're in a low code solution than it is to have them in a coded solution. It also means that you're getting the people who understand that process the most, they're invested in it and they want to improve it more. It also means that IT teams have less pressure on them to deliver all of these technology solutions. There's something for business users and, and power users to be able to create these um, processes. And it also helps to be able to test something quickly. You don't have to have a long six month development cycle to create something. You can have something that's quite small and something I really suggest is to focus on small little tasks. It might be a simple, we need to get this approval um, approval process sorted. Great. The next part might be, we want to get some um, email sent out and updating some lists of data. Great. And long term, you might then have another one to say, we want these two systems to talk together. That's great. Um, but the idea is that you can think small and then uh, and then uh, uh, move bit by bit through these different processes across the organization. So you're able to see the return on investment faster. But with a low code platform, for some uh, fun financial parts where are the benefits, uh, it's not an overnight, an overnight difference you'll see. Tomorrow, if you start using say a low code platform, if you start using Power Apps, you're not gonna see that uh, the benefit just straight away. And that's okay. The benefits you start to see is when you start to adopt that platform more and more, especially when you start to get to that second and third year. And just like any skill, just like any new hobby you might have, the more time that you spend on it, the more in uh, the, the more benefits you'll get out of it. So reducing IT effort, streamlining those business processes, there's actual real results that have come out from studies to show those benefits. But then uh, in the low code platform, 
uh, landscape, where where does Microsoft fit into this? So there's a there's a couple of popular um, uh, quadrants and waves done by uh, uh, Forrester and Gartner, and what they look at are who are the leaders in this space. Um, I, I had a look at it at, at these two um, diagrams uh, about or these two charts about three years ago. Microsoft wasn't even on there at that point, or at least uh, the the ones I looked at. So. Ever since 2018, Microsoft is uh, uh, shot straight up into the leaders category. And even though there are well-known ones like Salesforce and ServiceNow, Oracle, OutSystems, Microsoft has shown in a very quick way, uh, even though this has been happening over a few years, in a very quick way that they are a leader in this space. And that's really good to know that how, how serious they consider this. But why? Why the Microsoft platform in particular? Well, the the benefits you get from the Microsoft platform are similar be benefits that you get from low code solutions and low code platforms. But what you also get is the benefits that come with already being in a Microsoft ecosystem. So this works fantastic on its own, but works better together with all the other services of Microsoft 365. So things like SharePoint works really well. It works well across Planner. Microsoft Teams has had some very deep integration that's just been announced as well. We don't even have any solutions uh, on this because it's only just been announced where there's a lot of benefits you'll get on your Teams, Microsoft Teams investment by using uh, Power Apps. And Microsoft is smart where uh, traditionally or a while ago, Microsoft were very focused on their own services, but there were all these silos inside their own um, uh, services around say the office landscape, Exchange and all the other services they had. But with the connectors they have in Power Apps and um, across the Power Platform, it is very easy to have a um, a drag and drop interface just to connect to your other data, whether that's in Microsoft's 365 or outside of it. Um, I did a quick recheck this morning. There's about over 350 connectors right now that um, you can connect to different things for your data, like Salesforce, SQL databases, Excel files if you still wanted to, um, or SharePoint list that has some great deep integration there. And the good thing is getting started is very easy for your organization, especially if you are already a Microsoft 365, um, uh, if you're a Microsoft 365 uh, subscriber, because you already have some licenses included and a lot of those capabilities are already there. Um, just as a quick recap, this isn't to show, hey, this is all about um, uh, uh, Power Apps, uh, sorry, Power, uh, the Power Platform. Today we're really focusing on Power Apps, but this is all made up of a, a collection of different applications. And just as a quick refresher for some people, Power Apps is going to be used for creating your interfaces with a drag and drop interface. Power Automate is used for your business automations to say, hey, send off an email here or send an approval off to here for someone to do. Um, Power BI is used for all those data visualizations so you can create some fantastic reports and see some insights into your data. And Power Virtual Agents is a new addition to the Power Platform, which allows business users to be able to create their own chatbots uh, with a drag and drop interface without needing to be a developer. And um, just as a quick note, uh, uh, the Power Platform itself, even from Satya, has considered this their third cloud platform. And this is alongside Microsoft 365 and Azure, just to show how it's a first class platform, not a secondary thought. So this is coming straight from the top to say, we are committed, we are invested in this. But I want to get into the, the bulk of the, uh, the chat today, which is around the case studies and a few other industry scenarios. Now I've put three in here. These aren't the only ones I'll be talking about, but I wanted to highlight these three key ones because I think they have a great story. And I've also uh, put them in an order to show from a low um, complexity application to a medium complexity and with Origin Energy, a high complexity application. And the reason I wanted to show these different examples is that you can you don't need to spend a lot of time to create a great solution. You can uh, spend just a, a, a day or a few days to create a solution that people can see benefits from straight away. But that's not to 
um, ignore the fact that there are a lot of capabilities within this platform and you can push this platform to create very complex enterprise systems that people can use. Uh, so sorry, just before I um, get onto the case studies, Lauren, did we have any questions from the chat you wanted um, me to um, answer? Yep, there is one unanswered question um, from Anonymous. Will you cover off the difference between a, a power virtual agent versus a bot when deployed in Teams? Um, we we won't be covering that today. Today is uh, talking about power apps, but happy to have a chat about that afterwards in a different conversation. Uh, that's a, a good question. Other than that, all other questions have been answered. Nice, thanks Lauren. So the first uh, case study I want to show today is for Aboriginal Legal Service for New South Wales and ACT. And this is a really interesting example to show how a three-day power apps project is looking to save $250,000 a year. And just to give a, a, a quick recap, um, like Australia's community legal workers have an essential job and they're they're, they can be working with some of the most disadvantaged and isolated members of the Australian community and they provide more than just legal advice. I mean, that's, that's part of their, their role, but they're also acting as that interface between the legal system and the community to make that legal process easy to navigate and to help build that trust. So there's a large impact they have on this, but Aboriginal Legal Service is a, uh, is a non-profit and what you usually see for for-profits, non-profits, um, charities, but in, in particular for, for non-profits and, and, and charities as well, um, there's very limited budgets that we, we see happening quite a lot. And this can be compounded by uncertain political environments to know what your funding is going to look like. So what you see is um, IT capabilities or investment in IT seem to take a back seat because businesses want to get as much of their investment out of their existing IT um, uh, capabilities as they can and as long as possible. We don't want to spend that money on our internal IT things. We want to spend this on our, our clients. That's, that's where that money should go. But then you start to get into a situation where um, if you're almost a, you know, a giving tree focusing on clients, then you miss out on the opportunities to improve your own internal processes, which can save money, can streamline those processes um, and then reduce the amount of time to complete something, which means the time saved can then be spent being able to serve your clients more. So what we did was we uh, worked with them to create a simple travel requests and reimbursement app. This wasn't going to um, uh, reinvent the, the wheel. It wasn't going to be a, um, a, a whole process overhaul. We just wanted to look at a couple of main objectives uh, because challenges they were having are staff needed to print out and fill out a complex form for their travel requests. Then they needed to sign it, send it off to a lot of people and um, uh, get signatures. Then these people need to scan documents and reimbursements needed to be um, uh, sent in by sending a paper receipt into the head office to get approved. And this whole process of getting this these paper forms and putting them into electronic systems and getting approval meant that there was so much time um, uh, spent on this where it took almost one full-time employee uh, to administer this and you have about several hours of all the people involved in this process to, to um, complete it. So what we did was over three days we built what I would put in this as a low complexity out which means um, people who, these people are going to be, this, these staff members are going to be quite mobile and we wanted to make sure that we had an app that was targeted for them. So they now have a simple travel requests app which allows them to fill out their details, automatically calculate what their meal allowance is because before they had to do that manually and work it out themselves and it'll automatically send out the approval to their manager because we know that information because it's in um, Azure, 
that information is there for us already. We didn't have to do anything special for that. And what it also allows them to do is then put in reimbursement claims on um, any of their expenses they, they incur in their travel. And this can be say ticket, uh, train tickets, this could be any food for meals, and they're able to um, attach their receipts straight to these requests. So by just using this app that was built in about three days, it meant that it saved roughly 400 work days a year because it, it reduced the time by about 75% to complete this. And this means it's, it's going to save about $265,000 within the first year if you compare how long that process took before. Now, um, I guess it hasn't been a year since this has been used, so I'm very excited to see what the results are after a year of using this to see those, um, uh, to see the, the benefits that come from using it in that time. And the second, um, uh, the second app I want to introduce you today is one for a, a very large, um, a, a very large utilities company, which is Yarra Valley Water in Melbourne. So they are um, the largest of Melbourne's water corporations. They manage over four billion dollars worth of infrastructure, and they they employ a large amount of people. So what this means is a lot of people rely on them. And they're an important company for, the, for this kind of utility. Uh, and what they were having a challenge with was um, looking at their safety and compliance. They wanted to improve how they were completing their on-site safety and compliance activities. And we built out a safety app with them that drastically reduced the overhead to be compliant, improved their compliance score so they could see those result, results. We've been able to reduce the amount of time and um, uh, uh, double entry and double handling for this data and make sure it's in a more consistent way so that it can be reported on more easily. So these challenges they were currently having is they have a mobile workforce and there's a lot of paper forms they fill out. Things like before they start working, they need to complete a safety checklist on a paper form to say, hey, is this safe? Is this, um, can I start or what things do I have to look out for? Um, or they would need to fill out a fatigue assessment on, on a piece of paper and have to do a lot of arithmetic for this. And that, that's an interesting one where um, they would need to work out how tired they are. And the questions they asked are symptoms they might be having, when did they start working and what time is it now? And answer all these questions. And they had to do all this arithmetic in their head when they, they might already be tired and add up things, times, times things by a certain amount if it's over a certain time. And that can lead to a poor experience and can also lead to some inaccurate data or not the most reliable data. And a lot of these other paper-based uh, processes like the, the documentation they might have means that there's a lot of time spent then double handling this data again. You'll see that's a, a bit of a, um, a recurring theme I'll, I'll talk about in here. So they might send off an email when they see an incident or a hazard or they, they might get, um, they might fill it back out in the office or the, the site office when they need to put in their report for something. but there's a time difference there and you're already losing time being able to act on this, which is a lot of, which is a big opportunity cost. And there's always potential for manual errors to, to, to occur at this stage. And, it, and what we decided is they wanted to know, is this the right platform to, is this the right platform for us to look at? Is the power platform something we want to do? They were in that same situation where they didn't know if they were ready for this. So what we actually did was we um, spent two weeks initially building out a proof of concept and it, it just focused on that simple pre-start checklist um, questions that people would answer and safe work procedures, which is a way that they can see the different um, uh, compliance policies around um, different safety aspects of being of working on site. And we built that out in um, about two weeks just to test out and the deployment process to get it out to the on-site workers was very easy. It's install it on, on their phone, install power apps on their phone, it's done. We didn't need to worry about, oh, will this work for this device? Will it work for that device? Is it not out? No, we already knew that we, we'd already had that taken care of us from the power platform and from power apps. So 
After a successful pilot, we then moved along to building out more of this app. So that's a good example of test something out, see if it works, get feedback early, and then keep building out on top. So we then built out more functionality for being able to report on incidents, hazards, be able to do that fatigue assessment score and it'll automatically tell you, um, it'll automatically tally what your fatigue score is and what you should do. And this saved a lot of time and a lot of cognitive load on, on people who needed to get their job done and spend less time just trying to fill out, um, uh, fill out important forms. And what we also put in was a, an easy way for head office to put in just a SharePoint list, um, a, uh, uh, an alerts function, which means that they can say, hey, it's snake season, um, you know, keep, keep um, note of this, be careful of that. So it just means that whenever they're using this app, if there's any relevant information, they'll be able to see this as well. Uh, so what this meant is some of the results that we got from this is, once again, um, Rastic, uh, drastically reducing the amount of overhead, they've been able to improve their compliance score. And the feedback we were getting was really positive from a qualitative sense of saying, well, now they don't need to, they don't need to think about, uh, they, they don't need to think about certain things in a paper form about what is relevant. This is all targeted to what they're filling out. Um, and just before I move on to our high complexity app, Lauren, were there any questions in the chat so far? Uh, yep, there's um, a couple of questions in there. The first one is, how much is this going to cost me in licensing? Oh, that is a good question. I would love, um, uh, I'll, I will talk about this at the end, um, but I will tell you these ones, say this one here, uh, they already had the licenses from Office 365. The, these are using SharePoint lists. It's using Power Apps and Power Automate. This didn't require any additional licenses for them. There are certain things like if you want artificial intelligence or if you want to connect to certain systems, you might need additional licenses. But in the majority of these examples here, they were built out just using the existing Office 365 licenses that people have. Um, so it'd be good to talk about what that situation is, but being able to use this is not expensive, which is great. All right, no other questions. Thanks, Lauren. So the, the third case study I wanna talk about today, it's, uh, it might look like I'm gonna talk about something that's going to be another mobile application, but this is a different one. This is showing that, well, even though I've been showing mobile applications, Power Apps isn't, just for mobiles. In, in, in fact, of the majority of applications that we create are targeted for um, office workers, knowledge workers. And this is an example of how you can build those enterprise applications for your knowledge workers, for people who are sitting at a desk and they're going to be looking at a big screen or they're looking at a laptop. And this one relates to Origin Energy. Um, and ooh, oh, I almost gave away something there. Um, and Origin Energy themselves, they're one of Australia's largest energy retailers. They work across a lot of different kinds of um, uh, gas, LPG and solar. And they also work across other kinds of renewable energy sources. They're working both nationally and internationally. Um, and they have a lot of highly complex projects. These, are, these aren't, say, necessarily even the, the, the projects that maybe um, a lot of us might work on in an office. These are multi-million dollar projects. They involve a heavy amount of infrastructure and a lot of people are working on this. And an important part is around lessons learned in projects. And in particular, project managers, and they were, they were the key audience to this. So we built out an application with them for a project lessons learnt um, application. And the idea of this was to help share the lessons learnt across project managers across all, of, um, across all of Origin. And we'll get into the challenges that they had because previously they were working with, um, they were working with a more localized view. Their, their idea of, well, their, their current or previous approach to lessons learned was 
more localized to the department or the business um, division that project managers were working in uh, to understand, well, what are the lessons learned for this project? It meant that uh, at the end of a project, they might document, this is what we learnt, um, and this will be really good for other project managers to know going forward. But the process was a challenge and the tools that they had um, wasn't supporting these project managers to help share this out. Uh, what might happen is it is stored in different SharePoint sites or it was stored in different file shares. So trying to find where these are or even know if a project manager had access to it was quite difficult. So there's a lot of potential uh, there's a lot of knowledge there, a lot of great knowledge that potentially could never be seen or very rarely seen. And there's a great opportunity there for other project managers who are in the same department or in other departments or divisions to learn from this information. And because there was no central view linking this all together, it meant it was very hard to understand what was learnt before and what actions were taken. And this and and this is one of the the um, big benefits we've we've seen from this is being able to have that central view for the application we've created. And one other challenge that they set themselves, and this wasn't a technological challenge. This was more of a cultural challenge they set themselves. And I I absolutely love um, how they positioned this. So um, as a bit of uh, background context, Origin had done a lot of discovery work and a lot of work to understand the actual uh, process and business problem that they had and they wanted to achieve. So they, they were very mature in this stage of they knew what their problem was and what they wanted to achieve. We were there to help deliver on their vision and I don't want to um, uh, take credit for that. that. That goes to them for being fantastic at that. And they took this as an opportunity to turn something that is seen in a lot of businesses as a compliance activity for lessons learned. We need to show what this lesson learned is at the end of every project that is important. And they said, no, this is a great opportunity as a, a way for positioning as an opportunity for our project managers to give back to the, um, the project management community at Origin. So instead of it being seen as, oh, I need to do this because it's in, important for compliance, it's, hey, I'm going to be able to share this out with um, other project managers. They're going to benefit from it. I can benefit from it. And it's creating this great community where people are, where the project managers are able to work more closely together in this aspect of their, their, their role. So what was built out is a project lessons learned app. And the idea of this, uh, it's actually, and when I use the word cute, I think it's, I, I, I absolutely love it. The, the idea is when a project manager is starting a, a new project, they need to know, okay, what do we need to learn from related projects? Well, there's a shopping cart um, uh, concept to say, well, I'm gonna shop for lessons learned and look at these other lessons that were created before. They're related to my project because of this, um, because of this certain um, uh, bit of information or that certain category. So they know what's relevant for me. And that way they can add all of these projects, uh, sorry, these lessons learned to their own projects that they're about to take on so they can learn from them and they can um, uh, have that capability or, or that knowledge for their own projects. And then they can add their own lessons. They can add their own actions as well to say, hey, for this lesson learned, we, needed, we need to do something for it. We can now put in action so we can do something about it. And they can share this to their social, um, their enterprise social network. They can um, uh, share this out with a link. But what they can also do is upvote lessons learned as well. And the idea behind this is to say, hey, these are uh, for other project managers to see what are the most popular lessons learned around Origin. And this made it easier to discover these kinds of lessons or just um, uh, see at a different time what are some of the important lessons learned at Origin and the projects they're working on. Um, so the, these different lessons are all stored in SharePoint lists. It's using Parrots for the interface and um, Power Automate is doing some of the um, uh, some of the process automation in here. But what we've seen so far is there's been some great feedback using this and um, there's been over about 600 lessons that have been put into the system so far with when more and more divisions are, or, of their project managers are starting to use this. Um, so it's been very exciting to see this, uh, being, being able to see this 
um, uh, uptake and adoption of it. Uh, so those were, say, three case studies I wanted to focus on. And now I want to talk about, I'm going to go through a, a bit of a showcase of a few different applications we've built out and just give a quick overview of them that can spark a bit more of our ideas for your own organization. Um, before I jump onto that, uh, Lauren, are there any more questions that um, I can answer at this stage? No new questions just yet. Fantastic. Thanks, Lauren. So. Um, what I'm going to uh, talk about are a few different scenarios where you might find uh, Power Apps can fit into your own um, your own digital strategy. And the first one I wanted to put in is around a popular um, a popular part of people's digital workplaces, which are intranets. So I've been talking about applications that are standalone applications and therefore a specific process, but people. Um, and we often forget that it doesn't need to be the whole process. It doesn't need to be fully contained. It can just be part of a process. It can be part of a larger one, which can be your intranet. And three that we've got here, the first one is actually the first um, production power app we ever had uh, with QBE a few years ago. And it was a global recognition app that um, allowed people to nominate anyone in the business um, uh, using a template at that stage and, it, it, uh, and expanding on it, um, it allowed anyone to nominate someone else in their business they wanted to recognize. And it's a yearly thing. It's a very, um, it's a very important part of the culture at QBE. And uh, what we're able to do is, uh, because it's all using um, their profiles, we can get their information for, hey, it's who, who's the manager who you're nominating? It sends it off automatically to the manager. And when the manager endorses them, it lets the person who's been nominated to know, hey, you've been, you've been endorsed, you've been nominated. And before this, this whole process would need to be manually handled with sending off um, or filling in an info path form at that time for who needed to be filled out. And it was quite difficult to manage that process. But all we all we needed to do was store this information in a SharePoint list, um, use Power Automate to send off all these beautiful HTML emails, and uh, this helped that process so much because it also meant the global recognition team who were involved in in managing this process save time because the SharePoint list were able to use different views to say which divisions, which locations are getting more um, more uh, more nominations than others, so they could use this as a way of acting on that data to say we should focus more on this division, um, so they can get more in more endorsements from them and more recognition. And what we saw is usually they get about 800 nominations in an eight-week period um, each year. Uh, this was over a six-week period for the the nominations open. They got just under 1,600 nominations during that time. So we've been able to see that not only um, has it meant that we've gotten more nominations in that time, they've been able to get more nominations. It's been in a shorter um, a shorter time span, and there was some great feedback as well on just the whole experience of being able to complete it, being able to nominate people. Um, we have one from Simic as well, and we've got one screenshot, uh, one screenshot from it. This one's actually at the tail end of development, so we haven't gone live with it yet, and I, but I thought it was interesting to include this one to show some recent work we've been doing. Um, this allows them to create a, new di a news digest to be able to share out to their employees. Um, and this will let them get information from uh, their SharePoint news pages and also add in any other content they want to. And it creates a beautiful HTML template for them that they can send out to other people. Uh, so that one's looking great. We're looking to have that one go live um, quite soon. And Randwick themselves, uh, this is an interesting one to show. You don't need to create an app that has a, a big audience for the people who are using the application, but it can have a far, a far wide reach. Uh, this one is for the general manager to be able to um, create updates that get posted on the homepage for their intranet. And uh, this was going to be in a particular format and uh, we used a power app that was similar to an Instagram style um, application just to say, yep, post this. It'll post on the homepage in a certain way. This is only used by her, but it appears on the homepage for everyone. So. Something to keep in mind when you're building power apps is don't necessarily think it has to be used by everyone. Even 
being used by one person or a small handful of people can have a large impact. Um, also move on to a few different internal processes um, for, uh, uh, for a few different applications we've created. Um, APA, we've been working with them to move their existing travel expenses application from um, an on-premise SharePoint 2010 solution into a, a Power App solution now. So that's been very interesting to work through, hey, what are the advantages we get with the user interface of what we can create and be a bit smart in some of the information to know if someone's traveling for work somewhere, we can pre-fill some data out for the bookings for their, um, their car rentals, their flights, and their um, uh, uh, other uh, kinds of bookings they need to put in. And we can also put in some smarts on who needs to approve depending on what authority level they have. Um, so that's been great to work with them on that. And uh, you'll notice that uh, uh, I've also got another one for APA on here for their document execution. And I wanted to put a couple of theirs in here to show uh, for a client who's been really getting involved and invested in the platform to show that if you spend more uh, time getting used to the platform and trying to look at more processes, you start to see where the benefits are. And when we've been working with them, uh, the stakeholders have been able to say, oh, I know a bit of uh, SharePoint, can I, can I use this? And we'll say, yeah, absolutely. Um, you can use a, a Power App and connect it up to here. So it helps to identify who those champions might be. And the document execution process meant that we could um, take two Word documents and a, a slew of um, emails back and forth to put in one process to allow people to understand, well, if I'm getting a contract to be executed, um, here are the things I need to check off, here are the different departments I need to get involved, and this will handle that authorization process. Um, Ferrero, we built out with them a, um, a stock movement application and we spent less time on the actual user interface and more time just understanding, well, what's the automatic um, approval matrix going to be like? So there's some really good smarts in here to say, hey, depending on what department you're in um, and depending on what kind of stock movement you're performing, this will send it to different areas. And the good thing is this is a little screenshot of it in a, um, uh, a tab in a team you can embed your apps into different areas within your um, digital workplace. So you can put it in teams if people feel more comfortable using it there. Um, and another one we have is with Yarra Valley Water with their engineering work orders. This is an example of being able to have um, working on a project between Yarra Valley Water and their um, engineer designers to be able to track where something is in say creating a solution design and manage that process throughout and all the steps that are needed. Um, it allows people to log any chats in there. It keeps track of all the approvals and handles those kinds of um, stage gates and also allows them to um, add all the documents in here. And this is all handled by SharePoint lists and uh, SharePoint document libraries. So that meant they didn't need to, um, they didn't need to purchase additional licenses to actually use this. Uh, for finance and project management, we have a few different ones here. Um, from Taze, we have an Explore to Plan Hub, which is similar in um, its nature to uh, the Yarra Valley Engineering Work Order System, but it's different that it focuses more on the budgetary information um, in that process. So similar, but um, more, more on the budgetary process. Um, for RACV, uh, we built out a, a procurement management system for them that previously was all handled within an Excel document for uh, the, the actual data, for activities that go on, for procurement activities, and what benefits the business will see. And being in an Excel file made it hard to handle the process, handle approvals for procurement activities, and then reporting on the data was, was actually difficult, you'd be surprised. Uh, so we built out a Power App that they could capture all this information and also built out some Power BI dashboards to, for their reporting. So this has had a significant um, reduction in the amount of time it takes to use the procurement um, or handle the procurement management process uh, or the activities and benefits process, as well as creating those reports for senior stakeholders. That's, that's in Power BI, they've got the data there already. They don't need to 
um, create reports or even just putting in a screenshot of a Power BI um, dashboard is a lot quicker. Co-op and Water had a different one, which is around being able to handle the payment receipts at um, different offices to say, hey, someone's paying their account. And this will actually print out a, um, uh, this will format it in a way that they can then print it out uh, for a receipt if, if someone needs a printed receipt. And I also wanted to include one at the end uh, of this section as well, which is um, us, Engage Squared. Uh, we eat our own dog food. Uh, we feel if we can't stand behind um, something we deliver for clients, then, then what's the point? We, we, we see the benefits ourselves. So our entire project and portfolio, man and portfolio management solution is built on Power Apps. And the interesting thing is, you know, hey, um, I, I know Microsoft are listening, but um, our, our uh, resourcing uh, tool is on 10,000 feet. So that's an external system. Using the Power Platform, we can very easily connect into it to get that information for our projects, um, for, our, for our current projects. And we connect to our sales system, um, HubSpot, to be able to easily um, uh, create a lot of information and handle invoicing within this system. So it's something that we actually use ourselves and our project managers use on a daily basis. Um, and finally, a couple other examples I want to show in mobile workforce. Just wanted to show two here because I've already shown a lot. Um, is for V-Line, they had a lot of paper-based rail safety forms. Um, we've been able to um, move them across or build out um, iPad uh, targeted devices. So they're able to fill that out on their iPads alone. And Armatech um, Environmental, we had built out for them an asset management app, which means that uh, out in the field, they can just use their phone to scan QR codes to get information about that asset. And it also means that they can update any details for it as well. So that's a really good example of working in the physical space, but also having a digital mindset. So I've been showing a lot of examples in here, but you might be saying, that's, that's great, Rob, you just went through a lot of examples. I can see some inspiration here, but what do, what do I do with all this information? How do I actually get started? Um, well, if you're quite early on in your um, in your Power Platform low code um, journey, this is a great opportunity uh, where I've put a few screenshots in here. First is if you go to Power Apps, so make.powerapps.com, or even in the office.com little waffle on the top left, go into Power Apps, there is a whole section for learning in one of the menu items. And this takes you to Microsoft's Learn site where they have a lot of guided um, interactive learning solutions to get you started in the Power Platform and Power Apps. So you can start creating your first app and then you can move on to creating other situations. And even in the creation process, when you're creating an app, you'll see on the top right hand side, there's a lot of templates that are already in the, um, uh, the editor itself that you can use to see, well, what does it look like? I want to click around and see how this was built out. So you don't need to start from scratch. I'll tell you right now, um, the onboarding tasks, uh, we use that for our own internal onboarding tasks we knew that we don't need to reinvent the wheel. There's already a template out there. So that's where you can see some benefits already. Don't spend all that time trying to start from scratch. Use something that's out there um, that's available to you and build on top of it. Um, Microsoft have even gone to the extent where they have a, a lot of extensive documentation and they recently published a whole slew of pages for how you can go and plan a Power Apps project where you might have um, planned other kinds of projects for how you might deliver something. They've given it from a perspective of, hey, here's what it's like to work with Power Apps. So you can see some similarities with other kinds of projects you might deliver for a, a solution and some things that are more unique. Um, and as I mentioned before, the, the community for the Power Platform and Power Apps community uh, is very active. I regularly go on there to find information out where I might be having trouble working something out and maybe the documentation, I can't find exactly what I'm looking for. People are so responsive on here that um, I feel confident that I know if I don't know the answer, someone else does. And that is really important for your own, um, uh, for your own investment to know there's a way to get help. So if you want to do that on your own, there's a lot of information out there. Um, if you want help in getting started and you'd like someone to guide you, that's, that is something that we can help you out with. 
Um, so there's a lot of different ways that we help out organizations in their power platform journey, whether they're just at the start, they haven't started yet, or they're a bit more moved along in their, their, their uh, journey. So we do certain things like replacing your legacy systems and applications. So if you have a talk to us um, with our, our Power Platform Center of Excellence, we look at what your existing legacy applications are and what it means to move to a modern, um, a modern application view and what that means for how you deliver these kinds of solutions and deliver them sooner rather than trying to have a very long um, uh, build phase before you actually get some feedback from users. If you're interested in getting people actually upskilled at your organization, we can hold, uh, we, we have different courses we, want, we run for Power Apps and Power Automate. Um, we can also help facilitate hackathons you might have where if you're a bit further along in your journey, um, we can facilitate those hackathons to say, all right, let's work on this task and let's get everyone working together. And we also help out with the planning stages for strategy to say, hey, we want you to feel confident that when you hand over the keys, when you hand over the keys to citizen developers and business users, that they can create these apps and you've got a, a plan in place for any critical apps to know how you'll handle them from a, a business standpoint, to know who's the owner, what's our, our strategy for this, um, and uh, how do we make sure that we're continuing to invest in this application? Uh, we also uh, provide services around nurturing your platform, which looks at setting up a center of excellence yourself to be able to identify champions in your own environment, in your own organization, and help onboard new makers and how they can know that there is a community there for them to help them get started in their own personal um, Power Apps journey. Um, but that is, that's what I wanted to talk about today. There was a lot of content to cover. And um, if any, if anyone's interested in hearing more about these, because sometimes we only get a, to talk about a little bit of them because I wanted to show a lot for people. Um, but I, I'd love to hear more from you for any questions you might have, or if you want to discuss something, um, we've got our, um, our, uh, nice email for engage at engagesquared.com or feel free to send me an email as well if you have any questions or you'd like to chat through something. Um, I know commonly there are questions around say uh, licensing and times um, to be able to create things. So these are the sorts of conversations that we can have. Um, but I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, it was great to have you uh, with us. And I just wanted to throw it over to see if anyone had any um, questions I could help answer. We're getting all of the questions answered right now. So um, we do have one that just came on in. Oh, also thank you, a comment. Well. Thanks for that. Very informative from Steve F. Oh, cheers. Thank you very much. Right, while we're while we're waiting and wrapping up, um, maybe it is worth ask, uh, answering just one question that's come up just around a little bit around Microsoft's pathway and what sort of differences between some legacy technology like SharePoint Designer and SharePoint Workflows, uh, Power Automate and Power Apps. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, this is a very interesting one where uh, Microsoft has had uh, previously SharePoint Designer 2013 was their workflow tool of, of choice, or at least the included one. Um, that has that is retiring very soon. That is re retiring. Uh, ooh, I think at the end of October. Steve, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but the the challenges we've been seeing organisations face is they have solutions built on this. And what is the pathway um, for things like your process automation going from SharePoint 2013? The um, the process best choice is probably to go to Power Automate. What benefits you'll get from that is not only can you speak with SharePoint already, uh, it connects to those other sources from Microsoft 365 and outside of it. I mean that's what we use for our own internal processes as well, um, and it's it's much easier to use than SharePoint Designer uh, for things like. Maybe if you're using InfoPath at the moment, or you're using SharePoint Forms or customized SharePoint Forms in, in the classic um, SharePoint uh, space, to move across from that, the 
best recommendation I would to, I would say is to move across to Power Apps, especially for those info path forms. But it's very interesting. Microsoft provide a lot of different tools um, for how you can collect data. Power Apps is the best choice for creating the um, rich interfaces you can get from it especially because it's drag and drop, it's like power apps, you get those abilities. Um, but you can also use conditional formatting in SharePoint, which means in your SharePoint lists, you can um, change what it looks like, as well as using Microsoft Forms if you want to collect survey data. That's a great tool you can use in conjunction with something like Power Automate to then uh, log that information in either an Excel spreadsheet or lists to then get some analysis on what survey results are coming through. And Lauren, were there any other questions that might have come through at this stage? No more. Okay, all right. Well, um, sometimes usually see, I don't think of questions until afterwards. So if something comes up, uh, I would be happy to have an in-depth chat about anything I've spoken about today or something else. Uh, if you do want to reach out, I've got my details up on there. Uh, we're also recording this, so if you do want to show someone else um, in your organization, hey, there, there was something there that looked kind of cool, um, feel free to share that with them as well. And um, uh, thank you for your time today.